Hello folks, um, I'm going to do a quick video with regards to the sum product function that is available in Excel. Um, today I was given the task of trying to provide some way of tracking items that we, um, we sell and also kits that we sell that contain these individual items. One of the problems that we had is uh, initially uh, trying to do the count up. It wasn't quite working correctly as we wanted to because within the kits it was trying to just count it as a kit as, a pass, uh, as opposed to actually telling us how many items had been sold within that kit. So to get around it, um, uh, effectively I, I kind of applied this at work but I, I've kind of put down the basics here. So uh, within here is um, pretty straightforward. I've got the date of order of when it was shipped, so I'm using today's date, the 15th of October, the item, and the quantity. Now, it's these two bottom parts here, writing kit 1 and writing kit 2, where writing kit 1 contains one pencil, one pen, and one eraser, where writing kit 2 contains two pencils, one pen, and one eraser. Now, this is where the uh, sum product really does come into its own because I can actually use all all three of these uh, criteria here to do the add up and an additional formula to take into consideration these writing kits. So, regardless of the, whether I've got multiple uh, pencils from writing kit one uh, or just one pencil in writing kit, sorry, yeah, <laughs> two pencils in writing kit two, one pencil in writing kit one, it, it's not going to matter, uh, and we can uh, keep keep track of that so here we go so uh, this is kind of just to give you an idea of how you could then uh, display that information back uh, you could have that orders list running as you know for the uh, millions of rows that uh, Excel now allows you to have I think um, so basically I've got today's date uh, that's just my uh, kicking criteria uh, the item, so the pencil, the pen, the eraser, writing kit 1 and writing kit 2 and then my formula. Now the formula is um, broken down like this, is I've got uh, here this is the um, the tab, the orders tab down here, obviously again you call it call yours what you like, uh, it's not going to matter then you select the range that you want it to operate in. Now I do tend to lock down my start and end range purely out of habit um, on specific uh, lookups that I'm kind of doing. The reason being is if I, if I do it that way I know that it should stay exactly where I want it and it makes it easy for me to then diagnose if I've got a problem but again that's um, by the by. So so we're looking up the, uh, the products on the orders page so uh, that's the pencil, uh, pen, eraser, right kit 1 and right kit 2. Then we're doing a, a quick check against it. So basically, I'm saying look over in orders tab for the pencil. That is my first criteria. That's the, the first criteria that you're going to look up against. Then uh, I go back to the orders tab. Uh, and this is looking in the uh, the date of order. So again, what I'm doing is I'm uh, cross referencing the date of order for today's date. So we've got B1 again locked up. Um, I find that a very good thing to do is if you've got a date range that you're going to be specific about, lock it lock it there and just have that so you can dynamically move it. And I'll show you the reason why in a second. Um, Follow on from that is you you kind of then close your brackets um, and put a comma and then it's this part here this is the uh, the quantity of each individual so if you recall I had uh, three columns which was the, the date of the sale uh, the item that was sold and then the quantity in uh, column C this is again going against there now the the part where I was uh, wanted to show you now is when we was having the writer kit one you recall that it had one pencil one pen and one eraser to, do, to get over that little obstacle uh, it's just very simply just put plus B7 so if you if you do have a writing kit that is sold on the 15th and it coincides with uh, the, the pencil it's fine it will put that figure in there um, now writing kit 2 because there was two pencils that's again just another additional uh, version where I've just put um, four writing kit 2 
oh, oops, sorry, it, within this formula here is if I've got uh, writing kit 2, I want to do the number whatever appears here times 2 and add it into that um, sum itself. And and there you have it. So that, that allows you to very easily uh, keep track of uh, multiple items and kits that contain multiple items. Um, I'm probably going to go into another video where I'm going to actually show you on how to make it more dynamic so if you do then start changing um, your um, inventory in terms of how many um, items go into your kits uh, you only have to change one variable and then it should therefore um, just cascade through so uh, hopefully we're going to keep it simple now um went back to saying why I would lock down this date uh, and the reason being is quite simple is if I uh, start doing anything like this uh, where I change the date for tomorrow nothing nothing at all um, and likewise bring it back it's quite easy if you have a, a date range I try and lock it down as much as you can um, sometimes it's not possible there's going to be numerous reasons why I don't but lock it down also just to uh, show you is if I was to uh, change this to the 14th um, 2013 um, and still have my kits like they are you see that uh, it doesn't take in consideration the pencil that was sold on the 14th uh, but if I go in here I'll just have one item that's sold on the 14th which is the pencil so there you have it I um, hope you found the video informative by all means uh, make any comments um, quite happily link this onto any form of forum share it internally at work if you think it's any good um, and I look forward to seeing the comments that come back thanks a lot